Little bar is making its way. It says the meeting is streaming on YouTube. Was that it's, not, it's not all the way there yet. I know it puts it on there a little bit in advance. It's not really streaming just yet, but I'll let you know. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Barb. Welcome. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, look at you beautiful people out there. I wish we were all in the same room. Seriously, you guys are some powerful bunch here. Um, I so wish, I can't wait until we're actually in the room physically together again. Um, someday soon, I hope. Um, so thank you so much for your um, commitment, your participation in the safety and security uh, committee. It's such an important committee and uh, we have some uh, work, um, you know, uh, ahead of us and but I'm confident that this group will come up with some really good strategies and solutions to ensure the safety of all of our children. Um, before we begin, I do just want to um, just acknowledge um, something that has just been really um, uh, just hard for me to deal with the past couple of days. And, um, you know, that is the uh, murder and the shooting of a 11 year old child in our community, Anissa Scott. And, um, you know, this was very so senseless. Um, it, stuff like this, violence like this really creates a long lasting trauma for our youth and uh, for so many in our community. I just want to say, uh, put our thoughts and prayers for the family um, who I know is struggling today and who will have some difficult days to come. So just want to um, spend a few moments for a moment of silence uh, for uh, Anissa Scott and her family. Thank you. Um, so um, we have a um, short agenda tonight. Uh, our next meeting will really be a, a working meeting. Um, but tonight we really just want to set the foundation, uh, introduce you to um, what our mission uh, will be the next couple months, uh, the agenda is uh, in our blackboard and I'm bringing that up right now. Um, we will um, do some introductions. Savion will take us through some ways of working and some establish some team norms for us. And uh, we'll start with our charge statement and plan of work. We'll discuss our calendar and our timeline and uh, Mark Brown, our safety and security director, will walk us through the 2018 School Resource Officer Ad Hoc Committee recommendations and officer a, also a, a safety and security uh, report that was given to the school board a few months ago. Um, any questions before we start? All right. Well, first, I want to introduce you to uh, Dr. Jenkins, our, our superintendent, who has joined us this evening. Uh, Dr. Jenkins, if you want to open us up. Oh, well, first of all, let me just say it's uh, definitely a pleasure to be here with so many individuals who are interested in what we're doing in terms of not just the safety in our schools, but in our communities and to have this 
type of representation at the table is uh, phenomenal in my estimation. And I'm looking forward to uh, serving and doing my part in terms of uh, working with the committee and working with our community. Schools are the communities and the communities of schools. And even recently with the whole thing with our 11 year old in our community, uh, that's uh, really heartbreaking. And, and right off the heels of that, we're having this meeting. So I'm looking forward to working with everyone so that we can just totally uh, eradicate anything relevant to uh, violence in our community of any kind. And I wanna say thank you because volunteering on a committee in particular on a tough issue, on a tough issue, uh, it takes a lot. And I appreciate you stepping up to the plate and wanting to do something not only in our schools, but in our community. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Reyes, for chairing this particular committee as well. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. And then also um, wanna, uh, our co-chair, Savion Castro, you want to say a few uh, words? Oh, what's that? Do you want to say a few words? <laughs> um, you know, this is the start of a new conversation uh, for what safety and a welcoming environment looks like in our schools where every student feels safe and they can trust the climate. Um, and, you know, how we want to think about restorative justice in our education system. Um, it's a it's a really smart group of people here, and um, looking forward to the conversations ahead. Thank you, Savian. Um, Mark Brown, are you on? He's the other I one. There you are. All right. So he's our safety and security director. He's going to be part of uh, really leading us um, and the connection to the administration the school district and the school board. So thank you, Mark. Thank uh, you. All right, so let's get started with introductions. Um, we got quite a few here. So what I'll do is I'll just start from the top left to right on what on my screen anyway. So it may not be on the same on, on your screen. So I have um, one of my favorite people in the world, Charles Tubbs right at the top. You got to mute yourself. Sorry about that. Thank you, and, and uh, appreciate you inviting me to be part of the team. And I will again do my part and best of my ability to make sure our schools remain safe. I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Jenkins in Beloit, Wisconsin, on some of these same topics, same issues, same concerns, and my career as a law enforcement professional touches my heart deeply, as you mentioned, and Dr. Jenkins also mentioned the loss of our 11-year-old child. So I'm uh, happy to be here, be part of the team. Thank you. Patrice? Hi, I'm Patrice Hutchins. I'm PBS coach at East High School. Um, I have a social work background, um, also an East graduate, so I'm excited to be part of the team and talk about um, next steps for our school community. Thank you. Wayne Strong. Hi, Gloria. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Wayne Strong. I'm a retired Madison police officer. I uh, was also among the first of the EROs at the time to be in our schools. I'm a huge proponent of the program. I think it has a lot of value. I'm happy to be a part of this discussion. I think it's important, but I also think that there's some other things that we need to look at in terms of disparities and, and so forth in terms of our um, citations and um, all of the strategies that we can look at to keep ourselves safe while keeping our most vulnerable kids, which are African-American and Latino students um, uh, safe in the schools and on the track to graduate. Thank you. Uh, Vera? Hi, everybody. Thank you, Gloria. I'm Vera Napati. I teach AVID at East High School, and I'm an instructional coach as well. And I also come here as a parent of um, two students at West High School. And I'm pretty psyched to be a part of this team to um, 
really think about the quality of safety and um, helping all of our students feel a sense of belonging in our schools. Thank you. Mike Hernandez. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. I know I had a personal conversation with many of you. Um, um, I am one of two secondary chief of schools. Um, I have been a principal at East High School and as well as Sherman Middle School for the last 13, 12 years, one year in this position. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Gina? <clears throat> Hi everyone, I'm Gina Agulia. Um, I, my current title is Coordinator of Cross Systems and Critical Response. Um, many of you know me as the um, lead social worker for the school district over the last few years. Before that, I was the social worker at Toki Middle School. Um, I did step away to get my license in clinical social work and came back. Um, and I'm currently in my role now, I am working with uh, school teams around training and coordinating their critical response teams to be trained in threat assessment um, and really doing that as a, a way to be proactive around um, intervention and support for students um, in regards to mental health and also to um, divert youth away from the criminal justice system. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Gina. Anthony? Uh, my name is Anthony uh, Ward. I um, currently work in the school district as um, uh, a security assistant, um, a former Madison police officer, uh, parent, uh, coach. Um, and so I, I would just say my, I feel like my obligation to this group is to, to always make sure that we, um, you know, keep coming back to number one, the historical lens um, of like policing security in our schools. And then just, you know, as a parent and as a person who grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, finished high school in Milwaukee and, you know, going to a school predominantly black, not having a police officer, not really feeling like it was a necessary thing um, so I see the pros and the cons. So I just want to make sure I always bring us back to the historical lens. And at the end of the day, if one of our kids, right, is impacted by something, then it impacts all of our kids. Thank you. Thank you. And my pastor, Pastor Everett Mitchell, Judge Mitchell. Yeah, thank you all so much. Uh, as uh, Glory mentioned, yes. Uh, I'm your pastor, so that's, that's very, <clears throat> but uh, I spent my day with Anissa and her family this day and uh, was with the family as they had to say goodbye. So just keep them in your prayers. It's not today that's going to be as hard. It's going to be her birthday, the start of school year, the Christmas, all the other aspects of a child's life that the parents will miss out on. So, and the grandparents and the family. So just keep them in your prayers as we prepare to say goodbye to her uh, family. Um, also just, I'm the, I'm the, uh, I am the uh, presiding juvenile justice judge in Dane County now. And so I will be overseeing juvenile justice among our judges. And so uh, I am the kind, we are the, like the last line of uh, when youth end up back in court and we're trying to, you know, be a part of this conversation and to support uh, holistic ways of diverting children away from us and putting myself out of a job and to making sure that the futures of these young people is secured, not through prisons or jails, but through community love and support. So I look forward to this. Thank you so much, Glory. And thank you for Savion for including me. Thank you. Glory? Hello, everyone. My name is Lori Herkes Dwyer. I'm the executive director at the Dane County Time Bank. And we run restorative justice initiatives in the schools and in the community. And I am looking forward to this conversation um, and talking about deepening restorative work within the schools and in the community um, and really working to shift from strict youth accountability to more uh, broad community-based accountability and supporting you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for um, putting this together. 
Thank you, Lori. Stephanie? Um, good evening, everyone. My name is um, Stephanie Pruitt. Um, I am a parent to um, to Madison School District students um, and also um, to um, a teacher in the Madison School District. Um, and I am really excited about being a part of this group. So thank you so much um, for inviting me. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Bryn? Hi, thanks. Um, my name is Bryn Martina. I am the coordinator of progressive discipline for MMSD. I've been in this role since October 2018. Prior to that, I was at the Department of Children and Families doing youth justice policy work. And prior to that, at the National Center for Youth Law in Oakland, California. Um, and I'm just really excited to be a part of this amazing group and, and see how we can collaborate together. Thank you. Marquez? Yeah, it's Marcus. Is, that um, right? is Marcus? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Marcus Flowers. Um, I am a social worker by training. I've been in the schools for, I think I just finished my 10th year. I've been at Memorial for, um, I'm at Memorial High School. Um, I've been at Memorial High School for uh, six of those uh, 10 years. Uh, the last three years, I've been in the position of PBS coach slash dean of students. Um, I also coach uh, in athletics at Memorial as well. I am a parent of a 2015 graduate. Um, and then I also have three other children, uh, a sophomore at Memorial, um, and then two daughters, an eighth grader and seventh grader at Wright Middle School. Um, my, I'm excited about this opportunity. Uh, my goal is to be a voice um, that centers us on our, our students of color and our most vulnerable students. Um, and also make sure that uh, the conversation that we have and the way that we view um, safety and security extends beyond just uh, when we think about emergency situations, but we think about the overall safety and security of our students, um, starting from a K a, through a K-12 lens um, of thinking about how do we create and restructure our schools so that our kids are feeling safe um, all the way up through their educational experience. Thank you, Marcus. Eugenia? Hola, buenas tardes. Eugenia, I use she, her, hers, ella, tú uh, pronouns. Um, I'm a restorative justice director with the YWCA Madison. Thank you for having me here. I'm happy to be part of this group. And I'm really looking forward to us to have a conversation about how do we keep uh, the safety and the, and the needs and that of black students at the center of these conversations who are the most impacted by the school to prison pipeline. Thank you, Eugenia. Ed? Good evening, everyone. My name's Ed Sadlowski. I have the distinct privilege of um, working for Madison teachers as the executive director. And uh, it's an absolute privilege to be here with each of you. Um, I wanna uh, just recognize one of my heroes, uh, Chief Tubbs, 2011. Uh, you really deserve a lot of national recognition. And I, I think I, I'm gonna continue to let people know the role that you played uh, in keeping everyone safe and secure and exercising their free speech rights. Uh, inside and outside of the Capitol when so much bad things were happening to working families in this state. So thank you, Chief Tubbs. And uh, it was uh, the same sense of safety and um, the love and community, which I've already heard expressed, uh, that you helped create then that I believe this community is going to continue to work towards for students, staff, and families of the Madison schools. So thank you for having me as part of the conversation. Thank you, Ed. Coach Asad. Coach, you there? Coach, don't make me text you. <laughs> Coach. No, okay. 
All right, I'll text him and then uh, let's see here. Who have we not? Um, coach, um, Bianca. Hey everybody, my name is Bianca Gomez. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm the Youth Justice Director over at Freedom Inc. So I do a lot of work around ending violence in black communities and communities of color. That includes domestic violence and sexual assault, gun violence, police violence, housing violence, all the things that impact black communities and um, make it very difficult in this society for us to survive and thrive. I'm really excited about being on this committee and I've heard a lot of um, yeah, well-intentioned folks that work within the district. And I think we have an opportunity to um, lead the country in creating actual safe and, and healthy schools for our young people. Um, you know, Madison, MMSD was one of the first districts in the nation among the first um, 10 that got rid of the ERO and SRO contracts. And I think, yeah, it's gonna be a very historical moment if it's done right. And I think we have the opportunity to bring that all together here. Can you hear me, Gloria? Yep, thank you, Bianca. Go ahead, coach. Thank you for um, allowing me in this room and in this space. I wanna say, um, you know, I'm exhausted now and I want us to make sure that um, we keep all this centered on creating a place where our youth feel like they're, they matter. Um, not a bunch of performative dancing and not a bunch of carefully nuanced conversations that lead away from what our central task is to create an environment where our youth feel like they can go out and be the leaders of tomorrow. We have so much work to do. We, a couple of weeks ago at that park, one of the youth in one of my initiatives dove behind a car, looked into the eyes of a black man, thinking she was going to be safe. This black man looked at her and continued to fire his gun. Now we had to allow another 11 year old to pass on. We have work to do. We have so much work to do and it's exhausting us. So if we're going to be in these places, let's be honest and resolute and forthright with the direction that we wanna take ourselves because we clearly are failing our youth and we cannot continue to fool ourselves and act like a bunch of titles and credentials should be the first thing we talk about when we talk about coming together as a group and doing something. It, we've got work to do. Thank you for allowing my voice in this room, but I, I want everybody to know that um, I'm gonna make sure that we stay tempered and focused on really creating a place where our community feels safe, black, brown, young, old. We can't continue to say that we're moving forward if every time we turn around, another black youth is being killed. Thank you. Thank you, coach. Martha? Hi, I'm really honored to be here as well. My daughter is uh, at Franklin Elementary. I'm also part of the Mantel Mamas group, which is a group of me and three other moms who are focused on special education and bringing the community together to understand the students' needs behind that and making sure that we're providing for all their individual needs in the classroom and how we can bring the community, which is teachers, parents, students, how do we bring them together so we can all be there for each other? I'm also on a couple uh, DPI councils. So they're also talking about equity and the distance that often happens between districts and uh, the parents. But I think with all the people that are here, we have an opportunity to really create some of those connections and start it off. So thank you. Thank you, Martha. La Rosa. Hello, everybody. Javon La Rosa. I'm the principal at La Follette High School. Uh, been there 15 months and loving it every day. And then um, I'm also representing the other high school principals as well. Thank you. Vanessa McDowell. Good evening, my name is Vanessa McDowell. I'm the CEO of YWCA Madison, where our mission is to eliminate racism, empower women, and to promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. And so I state that just to say kind of the presence and the lens that we bring 
or uh, want to bring here in this group. We also want to lift up our values of humanity, community, restoration, and growth. And so I'm here uh, excited to work with you all. Specifically, our Black students um, are filling um, the safety that they, they need to fill as well. I think, as we've mentioned and talked a little bit about the 11 year old and, and the sadness in our community uh, around that, um, I also asked the question, what's going on with the shooters? Like, have we talked about what, what the impact and, and, and what's going on in their lives um, that would make them do such a thing. So I'm interested in, in having a deeper conversation around those kinds of things. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, John Milton. Good evening, everybody. My name is John Milton Jr. I'm the Multicultural Service Coordinator at the La Follette High School. Uh, I've been there for the past eight years. Um, I just wanna say I'm excited to work with everybody. Uh, but I am looking forward to moving forward uh, with this growth in regards to resolving a safe environment for our brown and black and all multicultural LGBTQ students. Uh, La Follette has had a success record in working with um, our EROs to SROs. Um, so I'm looking forward to finding a solution to make it always safe for them, working with the parents and making a difference. And I wanna say welcome uh, Dr. Carlton Jenkins, uh, looking forward to working with you. And I will, I'm not a Q, but majority of my friends are Q. So, mm -hmm. oh, with you, sir. Okay. We, we won't hold that against you, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, Here we Cor go. Corvan, is it Corvan? Yep, it's, it's right. So, um, I'm Corvan Gaines. Uh, I work at Madison West High School. My title so there's coordinator of student engagement. I coach boys basketball there as well. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this group. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hernandez, for inviting me. Uh, just growing up in the district uh, and now working up, working at the high school, you know, it's an eye opener for me. And I, and I understand what's going on. And I understand the pros and cons of the, uh, the SRO. So I'm excited to be a part of this team and see where we can go and, and take it. Thank you. Yana? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. Hi, my name is Yana Williams. Um, I am the founder and director of Dear Diary, a mentoring program uh, for black and brown girls uh, in high school. I work quite close with the district as well as the county, I'm working with girls transitioning out of the system to any capacity. Um, as well as some of some girls who are um, considered at risk or are going down that path. Uh, so I look forward to working with this group uh, to help some of the girls that I'm currently working with and to continue um, pushing and preventing some of our other girls from going down the same path. Great, thank you. And then uh, last but not least on my list is Karen Kepler. Uh, she is, um, well, Karen. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. That, I had to do it. No one else had to do it. So I'm on mute on that. Welcome. Thank you, Gloria, for serving this as a uh, leading this group. It warms my heart. I've, um, I have a passion for action. And I do know Johnny Milton from when I first came from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to Madison. And um, you know, it was 25 years ago. And he and I, seeing his action and everyone else that's on this group, um, making sure that we're creating a safe and welcoming and a sense of belonging for all our students. Part of my job, I'm the chief of school of operations and I oversee safety and security along with other things duties as assigned by the superintendent, but my passion has become safe schools for all. And um, you'll find out that I'm very passionate about the policies behind what drives our mission. And you'll review 4147 that is um, specific, specifically states that it's all staff's responsibility to create a safe and welcoming 
um, school. And so um, we need, do need to take that action to ensure that our staff have the skills and um, will to do so and um, hold us up with high expectations. So I'm here as um, someone to observe and um, give guidance where needed, but certainly um, I feel that this is the right end and I'm really um, fortunate to be um, to hear all of you and your great thinking behind that. So thank you so much. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you uh, to Karen for inviting me. <laughs> oh yeah, and Charles Tubbs, awesome. Taught me everything <laughs> I know, so thank you. Yeah, Karen really is like the behind the scenes um, go-to person on the day-to-day -day, um, safety and security uh, challenges in our schools. And so she's been um, in on this for years. And so um, I'm grateful that she's here um, and to provide us some uh, technical assistance and guidance um, as we move forward. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Gloria. Uh, and then, so um, now it looks, have I missed anybody? The only thing I'm, I'm going through this, right? And um, oftentimes when I go through um, the beginning stages of setting up a foundation for committee, I always ask myself, who's missing? Whose voice is missing from the table? And I know we have a lot of uh, people in this space right now. Um, and, uh, you know, a few who haven't, uh, uh, who are not here today. Um, but I'm missing the student voice. And I know we have, um, mm. I thought we had a couple of students. Yeah, Gloria. Yeah. We had, a, we had a handful of students, but when the decision was to extend the time and extend beyond August into September and October, both parents and students were concerned about it going into the evenings. And so they opted out. So I, I know that multiple people here have given me additional names and I'm, um, I'm trying to get a hold of them. But when I talked to parents, I stated that I'm a, uh, after this meeting, when we determine the times, I will then work with them on trying to um, to work around their schedules with work and with um, the virtual learning to, to include them in. Okay. I think that it, that's a critical voice to have um, and maybe we can work um, and be flexible if, if it's not these meetings, may, if there's another way of incorporating their voice um, into this process that sort of um, corresponds with their schedule and maybe um, part of their work. Um, I think their voice is, is so important. Um, and then just quickly opening it up, is there anybody, any, any, any area or expertise we're missing from um, this committee? Um, I would like to, just go back to something Ms. McDowell said, I think that's really critical. Uh, the young people who are involved, or who have been involved, because if we believe in two, uh, trying to work with individuals who may have been involved with situations that are coming out, rehabilitation, and I do believe in rehabilitation, to have some of those young voices at the table um, to uh, contribute, I think that would be very important. And uh, sometimes I think too, and even trying to correct the system that has caused a lot of these issues. And I don't know, I see uh, definitely uh, Charlie Tubbs here and I know that he totally understands and Mr. Brown, but uh, this system, which is deeply rooted in uh, racial institution and training. I don't know if I see that voice here other, other than we're dependent on some of our retired officers because uh, if we're gonna shake it up, and to be disruptive. I think we need to have the ones who are closest to the fight, in the fight, to, uh, to help transform. Food for thought. Yes, I know um, Freedom Inc., Time Bank, and the YWCA works directly with students that are currently incarcerated or have had a lot of issues in the criminal injustice system or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm I, uh, speaking for the why and for Time Bank, but 
I'm pretty sure that we would be willing to make some recommendations of students that have been in, involved in the carceral system. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would also say too, let's, one of the things too, um, because uh, let's not forget to incentivize our young people for their time. We want to be appreciative of their time. And so, you know, for young people who some who may be struggling, some who may not, an incentive is always a great way to to, to get them to get engaged. Hey, let's just make the let's just make the assumption who's angry and they need stuff. So let's make sure we compensate them, whether we call it incentivization or however, let's make sure we compensate these youth and um, do it in a respectful dignity type of way as well. Okay, so let's um, let's do this. Let's um, those who have names of uh, students, if you can send it to Savion, me, um, and uh, Mark Brown, uh, and uh, via email, um, and then we'll compile a list of names along with the names of students that uh, Mike Hernandez is going to compile. All right, and then, you know, yes, and exactly, keep in mind that this will be during the fall school year. So um, if they're active, you know, students, um, we'd have to consider their, their schedule. So, okay, um, great. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to, and then if you guys think of any other names or any other people that should be here that uh, there's a voice missing, just uh, send them to us. And then I'm, now I'm going to turn it over to Savion, who's going to uh, take us through the next part. All right. Thank you, Gloria. I'm just going to quickly run through the charge of the ad hoc committee, um, go through some norms uh, and, and, and culture of the, the committee. I think we should strive towards. Uh, and then I think we will discuss the timeline, correct? Yep. Okay. So the charge of the ad hoc committee, uh, the committee is charged with examining safety and security options for our high schools related to removing SROs out of our Madison School District high schools. The work of the committee will focus on budget and policy recommendations to the board. Uh, some specific actions that we will go through will be review information regarding the 2016 ad hoc committee. Uh, it is important to note that this subcommittee of the board is different from the work of the ERO ad hoc committee established in 2016. The charge of the task force in 2016 focused on recommendations on best practices related to SROs and charges in specific contract language to include in the current SRO contract and review existing MMSD data, federal and local guidance, contracts and policies related to SROs. It was not focused on examining the process, policies and practices of safety and security without an SRO in our high schools, which is this. Uh, the next thing that we will go through is consider safety and security high school systems that would remain the same, revised, strengthened, and or changed. What needs to be in place when schools reopen is a big question. Uh, consider resources needed to support safe schools reallocation of resources. Uh, review and make Recommendations regarding current Board of Education policies regarding safety, security, and police involvement. Uh, some of those ex, uh, specific policy numbers are 4224, 4147, 4400. Expand 4400 to include more details of required police involvement and con continued relationship with MPD for Act 81 and 143 in response to mandated reporting requirements. And then finally to recommend alternatives to ex exclusionary policies. Um, so board policy 1041, ad hoc committees and subcommittees. Um, what I think will end up happening is that we might have to break up into subcommittees just considering the size of the, the committee. Uh, so that should be something that we all are thinking about between now and the next meeting about what sub committees there ought to be and which ones uh, we would like to be more involved with. Um, and then going to, you know, ways of working, aspired ways of, of working, I think that it's important that we consider our positionality uh, in this context. And so what I mean by that is, you know, consider yourself as an individual and as part of the, the collective uh, from 
individual perspective, you know, assume positive intentions and own your own impact. Uh, go out of your way to build active trust or go out of your way to be active in building trust and uh, empathy towards uh, people we serve with on the committee. Uh, we all come from different unique walks of life that we all can learn from. Uh, acknowledge the impact of decisions on real people. And, you know, just because we're in the stand age, just responsible use of social media uh, in terms of the way that we, uh, we frame our work and present our work. Um, as far as the collective, you know, us as a body, you know, we should ground our discussions and decisions and core values. So what is best for students? what's best for students' safety and what's best for students to feel welcome at their school. Uh, make space to address dissenting views. We have a lot of smart people in this group and there's gonna be some disagreement, but that doesn't mean we can't work together and learn from one another. Um, and then facilitate discussions with an eye toward our collective humanity. So related to students, we should watch for late meetings and watch for adversarial tones and interactions. Um, that's what I got. If anyone else wants to add anything, uh, feel free to go ahead. Okay, it looks like we um, got them all. Just so you know, this is these are um, the our board regular board um, members' ways of working. So <laughs> we we consistently. Um, uh you know try to follow these um as best as we can as we are moving through some difficult decisions so um thank you um and feel free again if you if anything comes up or you want to add something to the ways of working uh list um you can send them uh, our way and we will add them all right so um Next is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can look at our timeline and meeting schedule. Oh, maybe I can't. Barbara, are you still on? I am, yes. So I'm trying to share my screen. Hey, Gloria, let me, let me make just, a call post. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, now you should be able to. Okay. Um, so um, this is the timeline um, that we have set for us. It sound, it looks like this this time, five o'clock on Thursday works well because we were able to get the majority of board members. Um, any any thoughts on that on this time? Does that work well? Nod heads, maybe I can. Yeah, it, I'm getting a lot of nodding heads. Okay, um, this is so hard to do uh, via Zoom. Um, so we have um, Thursdays, um, the week of August 20th and the 27th, um, which is actually already next week. I mean, would you guys rather um, meet um, every two weeks, I would think so, right? Maybe, um, so meet not next Thursday, but the following Thursday, which would be the 27th, would be our next meeting. So meet every two weeks. Um, and uh, we do have a scheduled August 31st brief update to the board, which Savion and I and um, uh, Mark Brown um, can do just on what we've discussed so far. Um, then we move into September. We have two meetings there and then um, an October 8th meeting to report back to the board. This is a very short timeline. Um, we'd have to really uh, move quickly uh, to make some recommendations to the board, but I also added some, we also added an extension because we see that this work will probably continue. Um, realistically. So we are already um, somewhat behind because we got uh, some items here uh, from this meeting that we're going to push push forward to August 27th. Um, and that is the safety and security progress and next steps. Identify high school systems that would be the same, those that would be revised, strengthened, and or different. 
um, based on that conversation is really going to shape the way we move forward. Um, in hearing from you all, we're, we're going to do an exercise at our next meeting on the 27th around this, and this will really inform our work moving forward. Any thoughts? Um, I just want to jump in. This is Savian. Just want to jump in and add that uh, just for efficiency of the work group, um, you know, having thoughts prepared on some of these documents and and policies and systems ahead of the meeting. Um, but I I do think that it is uh, important that we you know dissect, go through the process of dis dissecting them together as well. So um, thank you, Savian. So uh, next, our next meeting will be pretty packed. Um, uh, we will be reviewing some policies. Um, and um, as I said, we're gonna be reviewing a couple documents that, we'll, uh, we'll, that you'll have ahead of time to review and make recommendations um, at that time. And we'll have a conversation around um, our current systems, um, what should stay the same, uh, which systems and place around safety and security we should strengthen um, and or be revised. And so then we will be prepared to do an update, uh, like I said, um, on August 31st. So that is a tentative timeline so far. And like I said, this is subject to change based on um, our work and our conversations as we move forward. Any thoughts? If not, I'm gonna go ahead and stop my sharing my screen so I can see everybody. Make sure I don't see any hands up, okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to we will move on to um, item number four, and that will be Mark Brown. Hi, everybody. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I'm gonna put my teacher hat on now and assign <laughs> a little bit of homework for everybody. So um, what we will do is we will forward to you two documents to review before the next meeting. Um, the 2018 um, ad hoc committee work uh, borrowing SO that we've saved and actually mentioned that earlier and the uh, recent board memo that was given uh, to the board about what has been done since the 2018 report. I think it's important that uh, instead of us sitting here and talking about it right now where some people haven't had a chance to review this at all, um, I think it's important that everybody get a chance to digest it, look at it, digest it, uh, formulate questions and send them to me and then I can formulate the answers and at the next meeting we can talk about it. Um, so that's what we'll be sending out. Uh, my email will go out with that uh, uh, information to you so you can send your information back to me. Gloria, can I ask a quick question, please? Sure, yeah. Is it possible that Barb would be able to share your PowerPoint that you had so everybody has both the timeline as well as a description of what we will be working on during that time. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll go ahead and send that. Um, Mark, we'll, we'll, we can go ahead and send that with the, the other information. It is in board docs right now. Okay, um, but yeah, yeah. I just don't think our parents or our, our community members here would be able to navigate through it. That's why I'm just hoping we can get it to everybody's hands. Yep, definitely. We'll send it along with the um, homework assignments. Thank yep. you for doing that. Mark, were you done? I'm done, yeah. Okay, so you'll get the copies, um, both, both um, documents. If you can review them and then come back, um, as Mark said, um, if you have any questions between now and the 27th, um, send them to Mark and he'll respond or he'll just compile all of them and then we'll we'll talk about them as a group when we meet on the 27th.
All right, any concerns, questions? We are really gonna, you know, like I said, this meeting is was really just administratively, really set the foundation. Um, but uh, when we meet on the 27th, it, it is really gonna be a working uh, meeting. Um, Savion, um, who is, you know, our, our, our one of our, oh, I don't wanna say our youngest, but he really knows Zoom really well. So he's gonna put us into groups, right? Um, so that we can really discuss um, some of these um, topics in teams um, and then come back and share with the entire group. So we're gonna really try to get really savvy in Zoom, right? Yeah, um, and as you look at the, uh, the charge document between now and the, the, the 27th, please try and think of natural uh, discussion clusters that folks could break into to kind of help aid in us breaking up into smaller teams that have more intimate discussions of these topics um and you know i think I, I i don't know if everyone is comfortable with sharing their contact information with other members but i think you know we should uh, generate discussion in the meetings and outside the meetings uh, as thought partners as well i think that's really important uh just to bounce ideas off bounce some wonderings off of as well um to really do that you know if we have two weeks between each meeting um i, I do think it's uh, useful that we have open lines of communication with each other. Maybe and I just want to uh, interject for one second and let you know that our legal counsel will be sending you some guidelines for um, members of this committee as a subgroup of the board about open meetings laws and the things that you can and can't do. So um, I'll send that out in that same email that goes out about getting ready for the next meeting. Just a, just something for everybody to be aware of. Thank you. Okay. Um, any anything else? I think that is the last um, item on our agenda. Is John Milton still here? Could you just uh, uh, restate La Follette High School one more time? It's what the La Follette you said. <laughs> like Michigan, like the Michigan or the Ohio State, the La Follette High School. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I think that's what you refer to it as. Yes, sir. Good. Do we not have any East High School representation here or what? I'm going to stick to the rules. I, I, I just heard Savion say the rules, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you again for serving. This is such an important um, uh, mm -hmm. committee. Uh, we are going to get a lot done. I'm really looking forward to working with all of you moving forward to ensure the safety and security um, of um, our high schools. So thank you very much. Um, we will um, communicate with you in between uh, meetings, but I will see you on the 27th. Can I get a motion or I move to adjourn? Second. Save on second. Any objection? <laughs> Discussion? <laughs> All right. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Be blessed. Bye. Anthony Ward, look forward to it. Okay.